Sure. Yeah. So my health story, I guess, started in my mid twenties. Um, I was diagnosed with severe depression after the birth of my third child. And I was having really frequent panic attacks and that was a really difficult time. And I started kind of going through the process of healing from that and, and learning how to manage that. And then I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And then just a couple months after that, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And so all within the span of like a year and a half, um, I had all these diagnoses. And I actually now looking back, think that the depression, anxiety, all of that was probably the Hashimoto's rearing its ugly head. And my doctors just didn't recognize that because it was so soon after the birth of my son. Yeah. So I think that's one frustrating thing about thyroid health is, you know, if people aren't always testing for things that they should be testing for. Yeah. And, and my story feels really unique because a lot of times people are like oh, paleo or AIP and, you know, avoid grains and avoid all these things. But I did a um, whole foods plant-based diet and cut out all animal proteins and, um, I did that for about two years and was totally, my Hashimoto's went into remission. My RA went into remission. The depression, anxiety just totally left. So everything was completely cleared up. And yeah, it's been, um, it's, it's just amazing to me what food can do. I went back to eating meat. I learned about um, grass fed and pastured meats. And so I started, I, I know that the, I think the way that things are done here in America is quite different from Australia, if I understand yeah, correctly. Yeah, I think so. The way I read a lot of the stuff I see coming out from America, I think, oh, I don't think it's quite the same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And so I ate meat for mm -hmm, 10, almost, almost 10 years. And um, anyways, just recently started having some more symptoms of the Hashimoto's flare back up and it's one of the things I can control. So I'm back on my whole foods, plant-based diet to see if I can get that to calm down. Yeah. I mean, I know that they say that stress can be a big trigger in trauma, right? And so in the span of, I don't know how many years, like we, we just had a lot of changes. So if I think about stress, it's like, okay, I had three kids by the time I was 24. My husband yeah. was crazy. We started so young. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm probably at the age in life where I should just be figuring out who I am, but I'm like a mom raising little people. And I just loved it. Like, that's what I always wanted to do was be a mom. Mm. But I mean, that's probably kind of stressful. And yeah. on top of that, my husband was, um, you know, just beginning in his career and out of town all the time. And so I'm, basically taking care of these little kids by myself. And anyways, um, I, yeah, I, think, that, it was, that's I think it was stress. I think yeah. it was stress. I think that was my big <laughs> Completely trigger. Stressful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always having to work through the mom guilt on that one. And then, um, that diagnosis actually happened years after my youngest son was diagnosed when he was two with uh, type one diabetes. So a lot of that's what we deal yeah, with at our house a, every day. That's a big, and how old do you say he was two? When you, he was when, two. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. That's little, isn't it? To deal with was, injections. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, there's tra trauma me. and stress. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, imagine oh, me chasing yeah. him around the house oh. and screaming like, why, why are you doing this to me? Oh. And when is it their turn? Wondering why I wasn't poking his brother and sister. Oh. And oh. It was awful. Yeah. That just sounds like multiple traumas a day. It's there right. all the time. So how have you learned to deal with the day-to-day -day stress over the last 20 years, 18 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, mm, so many different things. One thing that I had to do was really get solid on boundaries with people because, and, and I don't, sometimes boundaries feels like such an icky word, but I had to learn because I'm such an extrovert. I love people. I love people, but I had to really learn how to protect my own mental and emotional space by, um, turning off all the notifications on my phone. Like that sounds so silly, but just something as simple as not having text messages or Facebook messenger or whatever, just always dinging at me. Um, that helps just like make me feel so calm <laughs> time for prayer. I make time for just, you know, if I need some extra sleep and I don't schedule clients before a certain time in the day, because I don't want to have to I just am very protective of my schedule. <laughs> yeah. So, because I never know when I'm going to have a night, you know, that's the other thing. Like, am I up and down with him all night trying to train the dog with his sense? And, you know, he had 
he got too high or he got too low and we're dealing with juice and all the different things. And so I need to make sure that I'm getting plenty of rest so I can be well prepared for whatever I have to do during the day. Uh, so I don't think we know it. Well, I'm, and I'm talking to myself here as well. I don't think our culture really knows how to rest. Mm. We don't really, I mean, I've learned things mm-hmm. that I find restful, um, but it doesn't come naturally i think in our fast pace over scheduled yes always got to be list you know listening yes. thinking doing saying watching it's like give me 30 minutes you know like i just need some time for nothingness and you mm. know just sit yeah and does that come naturally i mean you've got to do oh, it deliberately no. but if you had to learn because <laughs> to me i find that really hard mm-hmm to, yes, to sit no. and just to sit, be still. Our personalities in that sense that really works for that we can learn to work for our health. Like before, when you said with your diet, I know that that's one thing I can control. Like I'm, you know, I'm having a bit of a flare. I can, I know that I can control my diet. Mm-hmm. So if we like to be in control, which I guess most of us do, <laughs> pick the things that we can control. And control exactly. them and learn to let go of the things that we, we can't or yeah. You just anyway. nailed it. I can't, you just can't totally get, nailed it. Can't give away my whole chapter. I want people to buy the book. <laughs> I think that's where they're learning to rest. And, and, you know, since we're achievers, we can decide I'm going to master this rest thing. Like I'm yeah. going to be so good yeah. at it. You know, it's like yeah. we can no, make I it totally. a goal, like, you know, yeah. even if it's a goal that we're, we're <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gosh, I think around the topic of stress, I just, would love for anyone listening to know that um, that when it comes to autoimmune disease and stress being a trigger for so many things, like, cause I think a lot of times people with chronic illness, when they're really working diligently, you know, we're talking about the type A personality. So people who are listening might have that type of personality. So then they're like, well, I'm doing this with my nutrition. I'm doing this with my exercise. I'm um, doing this with my sleep and taking these supplements and you're doing, checking off all the boxes, right? And then if things still aren't lining up the way they should be in your lab work or your weight or whatever else it might be, um, then people I think have a tendency to blame themselves and get really down on themselves and get really discouraged when stress could be that one thing that is something that you can't control. You know, if there's everyone deals with stress in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage anyone listening to, to not be down on yourself. Don't be blaming yourself if things aren't the way that you think that they should be in your body because of all the boxes you're checking off. Um, there are so many things that you don't have control over. And so that's why that tip about resting and soaking and, and just giving mm. yourself permission to release, all, you know, I, I think that learning to release stress, our, our body holds onto it in so many different ways. 